y'all welcome to my channel if you are a new visitor my name is shay thanks for stopping by if you're a returning visitor what's popping thanks for coming back and if you haven't already done so hit the subscribe button right now right now right now all right thank you i decided to do a quick little q a regarding law school how i feel about it all that good stuff if you didn't know i attended law school and i graduated i'm done and i got a few questions regarding doing a or I guess giving more information regarding my process with law school. I kind of wanted to not necessarily, I, I don't know. If you watch my channel, um, you would have seen in the past that I had like a little situation that happened, um, not even a little situation, I had a situation that happened that kind of turned me off to doing certain stuff um, as far as posting about law school. I felt like there were ill intentions going on and I don't think that people were really receptive of that. So now that I'm done with that whole process, I don't have to deal with, you know, school and certain people again. Um, I feel more comfortable talking about my law school experience and things like that. Like, I don't feel like I'll be whatever. So I decided to do a little Q&A video. Um, this is going to talk about some of my personal experiences, some things that I, you know, went through, some things I wish that I could have changed um, and all that. All right. So the first question I have here is what was the hardest thing about law school? Um, I would have to say that the hardest thing about law school was really my first year was a lot. So um, in Houston, we had Hurricane Harvey hit the first year. Um, so on top of, you know, making this big adjustment, because I was a full time, like a full time worker at that point. I was an admissions recruiter for a university and then I decided to go to law school. Um, after getting my master's, I was like, cool, next stop, law school. So. I had to stop that and I was used to the whole eight to five thing, but it was eight to five as far as, you know, I'm talking to potential students. So it was a different type of eight to five thing. Um, the transition from that to being literally back in class and having to sit and listen and prepare and be at school all day, that was kind of hard for me because my master's program was completely online. So that transition of going from being a worker and still having to technically report to people but like in a different way it, it just was a lot to me that that was the hardest thing the transition from being a regular i guess person and just working to going to school was hard to kind of piggyback off of that because i feel like that wasn't really a necessarily good answer but Another hard thing about law school for me was staying on top of everything and being prepared for class. During the first semester, like when you're, you know, a fresh 1L, you kind of feel the need to be perfect because it seems like everybody else is perfect. It seems like everybody has their stuff together and if you don't have your stuff together, you're just wrong in every capacity. So that was a big transition too. Um, just make, making sure that you make time to be on top or not necessarily on top, but you know together for every class that was a lot um because you have to figure out a way to not only do what you have to do for this class but make sure that even if this is your favorite class you have to still study for the class that you don't like because you still have tests and then there's a curve and then you have to make sure that you pass the curve and things like that so it was a lot um just trying to make sure that i made time to like not really lose my mind but also make sure that i was studying and effectively you know maneuvering through law school and the new transition and things like that and you know making myself acclimated to the new environment that i was in so it was just a lot of the transition itself and being on top of things um that was the hardest thing in law school for me is law school like the tv shows you know like the legally blondes the high get away with murders no no i will say one of the ways that it i guess similar is the fact that you know you do get cold called um you're in class but as far as being like how to get away with murder i remember watching how to get away with murder when i was applying to law school and i was like bro this is just how this is gonna be and, you know Brent said my school did have like an endless keating but it wasn't like that you don't chill at your teacher's house and if you do then that's kind of why you there but i mean that it's it's really not like that um like the legally blondes i mean i've just barely watched legally blonde recently too for the first time so let me just set a disclaimer but nothing that i can really think about legally blonde was similar to how law school was so 
I don't think that watching a TV show is a good indicator of what to expect from being in law school. Um, if you want to watch it, cool. But I mean, it's it wasn't like the TV shows and the movies to me. Um, yeah, I didn't really get much from like I, there was nothing really that I could take from watching TV that I could apply to what I actually had to do in school. So it's not a def it's definitely not a good reflection of what to expect when you're in law school because it wasn't the same thing. So the next one is how is online studying and dealing with like COVID and that transition. That's quite hard because not only are you having to learn the same things that you were expected to learn while you're in school, it's different now because you're in your home, you're comfortable, you're in your environment and you're having to find ways to keep yourself motivated like right now i'm studying for the bar and it's hard and it's hard because again i'm home i didn't plan to really be home you know because law school you're typically not online i don't think there's many online programs so in law school you have to physically be at school so you're kind of tempted to go to the library and study or do something as far as studying to where you're like still technically at school you're studying between classes and things like that now it's like you know you're home you're doing everything online you sit in your lecture you watch it and then you turn the computer off and then you might sit for a second and do some work take a break come back to the same spot it's like it's no real movement so it's kind of hard to really keep yourself motivated and pushing forward so it's definitely kind of harder um on you and i definitely feel for incoming 1ls i'm not sure if people are having um online classes or are you know taking classes in person i'm not really sure how much is working i think for my school they divided it up into where i think like the 3ls have online classes mostly um or all online classes i think the two l's have like mostly online classes and like the one l's are actually having to go in and so they're kind of trying to do control of it in that way which kind of makes sense um because the, it's definitely important to kind of build that foundation right for the first years but i feel for them in this transition so like just like it's hard for us it's hard for them and i, I completely understand um but it's hard <laughs> just to say the least but i think if you can find a way to make the adjustment it's hard but i mean if you know something you have to do then you know something you have to do so it's it's workable did i work during law school so not necessarily the first year i didn't work during the school year but i did work over the summer um the second year i didn't work the first semester but i think the second semester i actually started working for our um we have a law clinic not a law clinic what is it called we have like an institute, I guess it's kind of like a clinic, but we have an institute that's like a, a, a separate entity in a way. It's still under the school's wing, but it's like a separate entity that they have like different divisions to where like they actually do work, like legal work for the school. Um, so I worked in the legislative department for that. It's like a, the full year um, of 2019 I worked. So um Worked over the summer, I had like three different jobs. So I started to do more once I got comfortable. But as far as like working like a, a as far as like working like a full time job, no, did not do that because my time was you know limited and I had to make sure that I made the most out of my time. And working just wasn't it. I have a friend, she worked for the I think the whole time. Um, yeah, she she juggled a lot. She was tripping, but she did it. So it's doable, but it's just not something that I did. What is your concentration? So a lot of people ask that question. In law school, you don't necessarily have a concentration, so to speak. You are not at my school. So at my school, we pretty much, everybody had like a general studies thing. So it's like you take classes that, you know, they have assigned for you. You know, you have your first year law, you have your first year law classes, you have your second year law classes um and then like once you get to the third year is when you can kind of start trickling in some you know electives so they have the electives available but then you also have like the bar prep classes so like i did the bar prep classes so i really don't have a concentration um as far as what i'm interested in you know when i started coming to law school i was like i'm interested in criminal law i'm, I'm all things criminal law because um yeah i just was like yeah 
I'm, I want to do criminal law. I feel like the whole litigation thing just seems amazing. It seems so powerful. It seems so empowering. But at the same time, I think right now in the current state that we're in, um, I want to go where the money leads me. Um, yeah, so we don't have concentrations in law school. My particular concentration, I'm trying to concentrate on paying back these loans so I don't have to be in debt. How did I adjust to the time requirements of law school? I, I really don't know if I even made a good adjustment. I don't know if I ever mastered it. I think that I was able to do what I had to, but I don't know if I made the most of my time because it was like, you know, you can make these schedules and try to stick to these schedules, but it's just, it, it didn't work for me. So I would have to literally figure out what I wanted to study when I want to study and just make sure that I, it didn't matter how long or like what time I studied, I could be up to two o'clock and I could just be barely starting to study. But as long as I got the work done, that's kind of how I managed my time. I was more of a complete the task of the day. You know, I wasn't like a, I'm studying from nine to five and then I'm, you know, eating from five to six and then I'm taking a bath, going to the gym. Like I, I couldn't do that. I can't work like that. That's not me. My method was more like, okay, I'm gonna answer a hundred questions today. I'm gonna do, three essays and I'm gonna study for this, that, and the next class. Like that's kind of how I was able to get through. I think the most important thing is finding what works best for you and doing what works for you. Don't try to follow the mold of what somebody else said and what they did because I tried to do that and it didn't work for me. I found that I was being counterproductive. I found that I was not making the most of my time and I found that I was really wasting a lot of time because at the end of the day it was like, okay, I'm not accomplishing anything because I'm not meeting these requirements that I put on myself. So it's like, girl, if you just go ahead and adjust and do what you know you, you need to do in the time and then you'll be okay. So figure out what works best for you. Don't let somebody tell you what they did and feel like you gotta do that just because they did it. It's not how any of this works. You gotta find the method that works for you. There's a method to the madness, there's a method to your madness and you'll figure out what works best for you. But it's gonna take time. But how I did it was I did trial and error a little bit and then I realized that I need to stop trying to play with myself and do what I need to do to get what I need to get done. How was the grading process? Okay, so, whew, glad you asked. <laughs> everybody in law school is smart. Like, everybody's here for a reason. You might have gotten here in different ways. You might have had a higher LSAT. You might have had higher, you know, GPA. But we're all, like, everybody in law school is smart. You were able to get to the same spot, right? The thing about it is, Law school is going to make you feel dumb because understanding the law and understanding how to apply the law sometimes doesn't reflect in how you answer questions, right? So I feel that most students will have a better time with the application of, you know, an essay as opposed to multiple choice questions because in an essay, you have the chance to throw out the rules and, and apply and now your conclusion might be off, you know, you, you might be a little off with the conclusion, but, you know, it's a little easier with essay as opposed to multiple choice now with multiple choice it's a little different because it's like you have these four options up there and one of these are right two of them might be right actually because some of my professors would literally give us tests that had two right answers that is cruel and unusual punishment right they'll give you stuff that just looks so good it has all the right law but the thing about it is you have to know the call of the question and what's being asked of you so sell out to say law school grades you're gonna feel stupid you're gonna feel dumb you're gonna be like bruh I'm ready to quit. My whole first year was spent me saying I want to quit and me talking to other classmates off the ledge of wanting to quit. I had one classmate, she wanted to quit like every day. And I was like, girl, like we it, we started together, we gonna finish together. You gotta finish, okay? So there are gonna be a lot of times when you just feel tried, you just feel like you can't do it, but you gotta push through. It would be times where the average was less than half <laughs> and it's like as long as I get above that average if as long as you beat the the curve then technically you good so I mean law school is hard the grading process is harder especially for like written stuff they go hard um but it's doable it's if I can do it and if you're interested in going to law school if I can do it you can do it trust me believe me you can do it it's hard, but it's doable.
is it really competitive so um it is but it's not at the same time so for example i'm not sure how every school works i don't go to every school didn't go to every school but i know for my school i'm going to speak for what i experienced my school we have four different sections right so we had a section grade for my first year we had a section grade and then we had a um overall grade if that makes sense so it was like first off we had to like compete with our section members and then we also had to compete with the other three sections it was competitive but we also needed each other so it was like we had to compete to get to where we were in our section grade but then we also had to work together to make sure that our section as a whole did better than other sections because it, it depended on how your section performed what your grade was going to be so for example like my class we did horrible in uh civil procedure i want to say for civil procedure we had the lowest overall grade our highest civ pro grade was like a b if that like i i definitely don't i can clearly remember like some of the people that were in the top of our class um being in our section being upset because they got like a, a grade that they didn't feel like they deserved and i mean you're at the top of the class so you're you're technically right you probably did get a grade that you didn't get deserve and for that i'm sorry because civ pro was not my thing it's competitive but at the same time it's like we need each other i hear a lot of stories about other schools and i see on tv that people you know be hiding books and ripping pages out of books we don't have time for all that at least it didn't for my school now i can't say the same for other schools um it might be a little different but as far as you know my school went it wasn't that competitive how was the exam period the exam period is hard the exam period is annoying um for all three years uh i've heard the whole saying the first year they scare you the second year they work you the third year they bore you no that was that was a lie they work you all three years they scare you technically all three years too third year could be boring i can see where some people would say that but that's for people that actually just took electives i think i took like maybe like two electives if anything that weren't necessarily well no not even i took entertainment and mediation you know so those two were kind of chill but like as far as everything else i mean i still had a lot of work that i was doing so i didn't i don't know what they're talking about they bore you to death no they work you to death but the exam period is a little it can be a bit rough on you um and i say that because um you still have to study you still got to make the time to do what you got to do you still got to be able to analyze and and answer questions correctly and know not only what your professor tests but also know the law you have to know the applicable law you know have to know how to be strategic in time management and things like that so the exam period is a lot i will say that the exam period is when you're gonna see your classmates looking a hot mess they don't my school you will know whenever people get close to the midterms and the in the finals because like it go from looking like somewhat like a kind of runway a little bit to everybody looking like busted me too so exam period is stressful it is a lot but um i think it's important to also remember that you are the master of your fate so if you properly study strategically study and make Mo the most of your time um understand your strengths understand your weaknesses understand if you don't get a certain subject through the professor and it's one that you're gonna have to study yourself and and, and make you know the most of like for example oil and gas my professor is one of the top oil and gas professors period i believe i personally was not able to follow and study with him I wasn't I wasn't able to do it I couldn't <laughs> so um it didn't work out but I understood that and I knew that come test time I had to focus on how to make myself understand oil and gas so I could pass this test so what I did was probably it had to be maybe like a month in or so and I was like this ain't working so what I did was I my friend had the supplement. I literally sat up there and I took pictures of the supplement. Cause it's, you know. But I got, you know, my copies of the supplement and I read the supplement. And I not only read the supplement, I also went straight to the bar exam question. So by the time I got into his test, which was an essay, I'm 
I'm, I'm ready for it because I've studied in essay format and I know what to expect at this point because I've studied. And while I didn't get it from him during his lectures, I was able to use like his PowerPoint presentation and different things like that to be able to prepare myself for his test. So I think the exam period is stressful, but you also have to realize that it's up to you. If you know you're not grasping the material, um, find the method that works for you. If you need to listen to other people's lectures, do that. If you feel like you need to go to the tutor sessions, do that. If you need to ask the professor in his op or his or her office hours, do that. Figure out what works best for you and make sure that you don't wait until it's too late to try to cram it all in and try to be like, oh, I didn't get it, but I got to get it now. No, you wait as long. Do it when the time calls for it. And then from there, make sure that you're maximizing your time and making the most out of everything. So exam period is stressful but there's ways to make sure that you're on top of it and figuring things out why be a lawyer so um there are a few reasons why i wanted to be a lawyer so the reason why i wanted to go to law school one of my family members um someone that i actively would see in my childhood uh he was arrested um for something and it kind of really just stuck with me because i personally felt like the team the defense team could have done more um and granted I was young but I didn't really know the ins and outs of it I didn't go sit in the trial I didn't do anything dealing with the trial but from what I knew and what I've heard I just felt like they didn't do enough right I felt like there was something that could have been done to help his situation. Um, and a part of me was like, yeah, go to law school, do what you got to do so you can help him. And then, you know, I was like, let me make sure that I make it to where there is no other time that my family will ever deal with something like that and not have somebody from their family to represent them. You know, my father, my brother, like there are people in my life my my people in my life that I feel like people could be easily intimidated by and I want to be able to protect them legally should anybody ever try them so like with all the the stuff going on in the world right now it just seems like I don't want anybody to ever try to pull a fast one on my family and I wanted to be the person to protect them I want the I you know even though my family like jokingly will say now you know if somebody mess with them they'll threaten legal action like I I want to be that comfort for my people because I see that other people have that comfort so I'm like well if nobody else will step to the plate I'll do it so that was the real reason why I went to school to make sure that my family won't have to look all the way out here to find somebody to represent them you know right wrong or indifferent I got y'all back like you my family at the end of the day that's why that was the, the first reason why i wanted to go to school so the other reason was there was always like certain things that would happen that i would just feel like oh y'all weren't doing enough so for example um like when kendrick johnson if you haven't heard about his case please look it up that case was like a major turning point for me that case made me so frustrated and with all of my being, I wanted to fight for him so bad. I wanted to be able to bring somebody ju to justice for what they did to this young man. They took his life and made it seem like he caused his own death. And there were so many just random weird things like the fact that his organs were removed and replaced with newspaper. Like it was just certain things that just didn't it didn't sit right with me and never it still does not sit right with me so that was something that made me want to go to law school too because i was like i want to be able to fight for those who cannot fight for themselves you know at that point it's like okay well maybe i need to be prosecution because i need to figure out ways to bring these people who do bad things to justice so it's like on one hand i'm like i want to do defense i want to be able to represent those who have been wrongfully convicted and those who have you know these false allegations against them but at the same time it's like oh i want to be able to bring these other people to justice that do such horrible horrendous horrific crimes to innocent people you know 
no matter what, like, he didn't deserve to die. And there are so many people who have suffered the same fate as him that didn't deserve to, to die. So a lot of those situations like would add up. It was stuff like that that I would see when I was growing up and it's just like ugh, all this together. Like I wanted to be able to, sir, you go to jail. You don't, do not pass go, go straight to jail. Do not collect $200. I kind of wanted to play both sides. Um, and that was the reason why I wanted to go to law school. That was the reason why I decided to um, take my talents to law school so I can defend those and represent those who cannot defend and represent themselves against people who are even looking to really, you know, represent them and defend them and, and prosecute the other side as, as hard as they should. So that was the reason why I decided to go to law school. Is studying the law boring? Um, certain classes can be. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. Certain classes are definitely boring. Some of them are just like a drag out. Um, let's see, what class did I not like? Um, okay, so first year, like Civ Pro, first year, I don't know if it was because like my professor was so chill, like we'll go in there, he'll turn the lights off and he'll have his little PowerPoint on. He sounds like the dude from um, South Park, okay, okay. What I'm talking about might save your life someday, okay? Okay, Mr. Mackey, okay. 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 He sounded like that. So it's like, it, it wasn't necessarily like his voice was soothing or anything, but you know, he was just super chill. Never really called on people. That class was just like the one you just come in and chill. Like my, my friends would even go to sleep in that class and like I'd be, hey, can y'all wake up? Because he walking over here, he's standing right here. So it's like, you know, certain classes are just kind of not the one for me. Um, so Civ Pro definitely was that. So certain classes are boring. Certain classes, uh, are tough to get through the semester. And I think a lot of that also has to do with the professors of the class. But, um, certain classes are boring. Certain classes have certain things that are more interesting. So like I enjoyed my first semester of torts way more than I did my second semester. Um, also like with con law, or constitutional law I enjoyed my second semester a little more than I did my first semester I didn't like the first semester like talking about it so um certain subjects have certain topics I didn't like con law really either sure crazy right constitution law is the one that really kind of makes all the other ones you know make sense but um didn't really mess with con law too much um certain classes are boring to, to say the least yeah certain classes are boring but I mean you get through them what's one thing that I would change okay I'm gonna say two things that I would change. The first thing that I would change would be to, uh, like I would change the time in which I started. So I went ahead and I got my master's prior to um, starting law school. So I did my master's for two years and then I set out a year because I had to take the LSAT and then I started law school. If I could go back in time and change anything, I would have started law school immediately after graduating um, from undergrad and I would have went just straight into law school. So that would be one thing that I would have changed. Um, and I just say that because I don't necessarily know how much my my master's degree is gonna help me at this point. Like if it's really gonna make a difference in anything. So that's kind of what I would change as far as that goes. I would definitely switch up a little bit of the group that I was associated with in school. I think that figuring that out is important too. And the faster you figure that out, the better. Because who you surround yourself with will um, kind of, I don't want to say affect your opportunities, but it will have some influence or impact on your opportunities. Um, it will change how you feel about certain things. It will change how certain people feel about you and how they respond to you and things like that. So I would definitely kind of, because um, I started off kind of iffy. Like, I went through a lot of different um, factors, like a, a lot of different phases of who I was like cool with in school. Um, and it's kind of because I technically am older. I might not look the part, but I am older than a lot of my classmates um, were. So it's like some of the stuff that they were on, it was kind of still like they were in undergrad or even high school really. And it's like, I wasn't on that type of stuff. Like my, my brain was so far over here. I'm so not 
interested in knowing everybody's life i'm so not interested in being inside the mix all the time like i i know and i understand how to accept being in the spotlight for whatever moment that i need to be there and then not being in the spotlight for the next moment like i just i'm, I'm completely okay with that whoever you surround yourself with who you're friends with is a reflection of you people are going to associate with you with those behaviors so think about that before you like make any other major decisions um be considerate of that thought as well. People are gonna associate you with who you associate with. All right, so the last thing is, do I have any advice for incoming students? So, I feel like I gave a lot of advice already. As far as advice goes, take everything that I've said into consideration if you have watched this whole video. If you have, thank you so much too. I appreciate that. But um, <laughs> if you can, as far as studying goes, um, I think this is the biggest key Find what works for you early on and stick with it. So if you're the type of person who needs to use index cards and you know this, do that. If you are the type of person who has to type your own outlines, because there are going to be outlines floating around, there's going to be supplements floating around, copies of books, all this good stuff. So much stuff that you are not going to even be able to get to everything. If you know and you're able to find the things that work for you early on, that's great. Stick to it. Don't change up just because you feel like somebody else had success with doing something. Don't do that. And if you find yourself struggling in a certain manner, doing a certain method, and you know that and you acknowledge that and you can change it up, change it. If it didn't work for you in the fall, it's not going to work in the spring. If it kind of worked in the fall, okay, maybe take what kind of worked in the fall and then bring it over to spring. But find a way to kind of enhance what worked don't stay stuck in the past don't just settle and get comfortable you want to make the most out of your opportunity because if you made it to law school you're already in a great position not everybody gets to go to law school not everybody even wants to go to law school but lawyers are an important part of the world especially black lawyers so if you're afforded that opportunity make the most of it figure out what works for you figure out how to be the best student that you can be figure out how to be the you don't even necessarily have to be at the top of your class you don't because being at the top of the class is not necessarily a reflection of how you're going to be able to apply, apply this law once you become a lawyer but Figuring out what way is the best for you to get to where you need to get to is important. And the sooner that you do that, the better. All right, so thanks for watching this video. If you made it to this part of the video, go ahead and give yourself a round of applause because you did that and I appreciate you so much. If you haven't already done so, subscribe. I would appreciate it and love you so much for it. And also hit the notification bell so you can get updated and alerted when I upload new videos and all that good stuff. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them down below. I'll get to you ASAP. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.